In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to create this procedural biscuit material in Blender. If you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the project files, then you can get that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. You can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my materials. And to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. So let me just show you how I set up the 3D scene. So I press shift A, I went here to mesh and I added a cylinder. And then the default cube and the other default objects are about an average human height within the real life scale in Blender. So what I'm gonna do is scale this object and I'm gonna type in 0.1 and enter. And this way the biscuit will be much closer to the real life scale. And then I will press control A and I'm going to apply the scale. And that way this is now the object's new default scale. Then I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode and I'm gonna select Select everything and I'm gonna scale everything and I'm gonna scale it on the z-axis and I'm gonna type in 0.2 and enter so that the biscuit is much more thin then I'm going to press the 3 on the top of my keyboard to go to the face select I'm going to select this face and I'm going to hit E to extrude and then S to scale and I'll do that a few more times so E to extrude just extrude it up a little bit and then scale it down and E to extrude and S to scale just kind of adding more geometry and why I'm adding all of this geometry is because I'm going to be using the displacements in the node editor to actually displace the mesh and so we do need some geometry for the displacements to use and then I can also hold down the alt key and select this loop right here and then what I'm going to do is click right here to turn on the proportional editing and I can press G to grab I can bring it up on the z-axis and I can also scroll my scroll wheel and scroll it way down so that the proportional editing is smaller and I can just bring that up a little bit so something like that then what I can also do is hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices there and I can press control B just to give the edge a bevel there and then also right in here I'm gonna press control R to add a loop cut I can left click and then right click so it stays in the center and also control R to add a loop cut and left click and right click so it stays in the center and then I also want to press the three on the top of my keyboard to go back to the face select and I'm going to select this face and I'm going to press I to inset and I'm just going to scale this way down place it there but then I want to merge these together so that there's just one vertex in the center so I'm going to press the M key and then I'm going to merge at center and now we just have one vertex there in the very center and then also right down here on the bottom of the biscuit I want to add a bit more geometry so let's click right here to the face select or you can press the three on the top of your keyboard and I'm just going to select this face here and I'll press the I key to inset that place that there and inset that a few more times so just hit the I key to inset and add a bit more geometry all right I can press the tab key to go back to object mode and then right over here on the modifier properties I want to give this a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out so let's click on add modifier and under generate I can add the subdivision surface and then I want to turn the viewport and render levels both up to three so that it has much more geometry and then using the object context menu I can shade this object smooth and then I also want to sharpen up this bottom edge here on the bottom of the biscuit. So I'll press the tab key to go into edit mode and I can press control R to add a loop cut and I'm going to click and then drag down and place it there just so that that edge is a bit sharper. So something like that, just some simple modeling for the biscuit. And then in object mode, I can press shift A and I can go down here and add a camera and then I can just navigate to where I want the camera to be and I can press control alt numpad zero, control alt numpad zero will bring the camera to where we are. And then with the camera selected, you can press G to grab, you can hold down the shift key to make your movements more sensitive and just move the camera around. And also right over here on the object data properties here on the camera, I want to turn the focal length up to 80 and this way it'll make everything look a bit more flat and I do think that looks better. And I can also press the G key to grab and then I can double tap the Z key and this will bring the camera in and out. So I'll just place the camera about there. And then if I hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view, you can see that the lighting isn't very nice and so I'm going to be adding in an HDRI to get some nice realistic lighting. So right here on the world properties, 
right here on the surface. If you click on the yellow dot next to color, you can choose the environment texture, and then you can click on the open button and open up an HDRI. And I'm going to be adding in the Machine Shop 02 1K HDRI. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. I'll have the links in the description if you'd like to download it. And I downloaded the 1K HDR version. So I'm just going to double click on this to open it up. And then right here on the strength, I'm going to turn the strength to a 0.8 so that the HDRI is a little bit less strong. Now to make the colors look a bit nicer, I'm going to go right here to the render properties and I'm going to open up the color management tab. And I'm going to use the view transform of filmic and then on the look here, I'm going to change this to very high contrast and this will pop out the colors and make everything more contrasty and saturated. And also if you don't want to see the HDRI in the background, you can open up the film tab right here and you're going to check mark the transparent and that way the background will be transparent but it will still add lighting to the scene. And then also I am doing this in cycles render and I definitely would recommend doing this in cycles because I am trying to make this look very realistic. And also I'm going to be using the displacements in the node editor and the node editor displacements only work in cycles, they don't work in EV. So I would recommend using cycles. Now I actually want to rotate the HDRI light around because right now it's kind of blown out and the lighting is actually going to look pretty flat. So I want to rotate the HDRI around because I found that the lighting looks better if it's coming at a different angle. So what I'm going to do is click right here to go to the shading workspace and then I have the shader nodes right here and the 3d viewport over here and I'm going to go into the rendered view and then to edit the world nodes we can click here on object on the shader editor and we can change this to world instead now I'm going to be using the node wrangler add-on in this tutorial so if you don't have the node wrangler enabled you can click on edit and you can go to the preferences and then over there in the add-ons tab you can just search for node wrangler and just check mark the node wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So once the node wrangler add-on is turned on you can select the HDRI here in the world shader nodes and you can press Control T and that is using the feature of the node wrangler and it's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then we can use this mapping node to rotate around the HDRI because the mapping is going to control where the HDRI is placed. So right here on the rotation, we can rotate the Z value and that's going to rotate the HDRI around. So I'm going to type in negative 90 just to rotate that over by negative 90. And now you can see that there's a bit more contrast. There's kind of some shadow here and the light is kind of coming over at this angle. And that really will make the material look much nicer and you'll be able to see a lot more detail in the material. So I do like that better. And then let's click on world here and I'm going to change this back to object so that we can edit the object material. So just select the object and then here in the shader editor, I'm going to click on new to add a new material and I can re rename the material to biscuit. So to start off, I want to add a gradient texture because I want the bottom of the biscuit to look a bit darker and make it look like maybe it's a little bit toasted or more cooked. And then I want the top of the biscuit to look a little bit lighter. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the gradient texture and let's put the gradient texture right there. And then because we turned on the node wrangler add-on, you can hold down the control and shift key and then select different nodes. And that's going to preview the different nodes on the object. So I'm just going to control shift and select the gradient texture. And you can see the gradient texture is black and then it goes to white. Now I want to rotate the gradient texture because I want it to be darker on the bottom and then be lighter as it goes up to the top of the biscuit. So with the gradient texture selected, I can press Control T, and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And I want to use the object coordinate, so let's put the object into the vector of the mapping. So now I want to rotate the gradient texture around so I can change the rotation Y and that's going to rotate the gradient. So I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees and that'll rotate it over. So you can now see it's black here and then it looks a little bit lighter here. Now it is kind of dark and it is hard to see. So I actually want to bring the gradient texture down. So right here on the location, we rotated the gradient over. So if we take the X location and move that up and down, that is going to move the gradient up and down. So I'm going to turn the X to a 0 0.025, just a 0 0.025. I don't need to move it down very much, but now you can see it's a bit brighter. And then to make it even brighter, I'm going to be using a color ramp. So let's now add a color ramp to control the colors of the gradient. 
So I can press Shift A. Let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the color ramp node, and let's put the color ramp after the gradient texture. And then I can drag the white tab and drag it over, and if it's closer to the black tab, it's going to be more contrasty. And I can also drag this black tab over if I want to, but I'm just going to leave the black tab over there. So now you can see it's lighter up here and then darker down there. Now I also want to make a noisy texture for the biscuit surface. So I'm going to press Shift A, I'm going to go to the search, and I'm going to start by adding a Voronoi texture, and let's stick the Voronoi here under the color ramp. And then I can Control Shift and select the Voronoi texture to preview it. Now I actually want to make this pretty small, so I'm just going to turn the scale to 1 here on the Voronoi. But then I want to distort this Voronoi texture with a noise texture. So I can press Shift A, Let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the noise texture, and I can put the noise texture underneath the mapping. And I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. Now you can see that there's a bit of stretching on the noise texture on the object here, and so I'm going to use the object coordinates to get rid of the stretching. So I'll put the object into the vector of the noise texture, and that's why we use the object coordinates for the procedural materials, because the object coordinates is going to place the texture on the object more evenly. So now let's change the noise texture settings. So I'm going to turn the scale up to like a 15 so that we can see more of it, and then I'm also going to turn the detail all the way to the max of 15 so it has much more detail. And let's also turn the roughness up a little bit, so I'm just going to turn the roughness up to like a 0.6, and now you can see there's even more detail. So I now want this noise texture to distort the placement of the Voronoi. So I'm going to control shift and select the Voronoi texture, and then what I want to do is I want to take the noise texture factor, and I want to put that into the vector of the Voronoi, because the vector is going to determine the placement of where the texture is. You can see the mapping node is going through the vector, and so it's changing the placement of the gradient. So this noise texture is going to be put into the vector, and so it's going to distort the placement of the Voronoi texture. Now it is very very subtle, but if you look closely there is some lighter areas and some darker areas, but you'll be able to see it better once we mix it with the gradient. So this Voronoi texture has all the noise for the biscuit, but then this gradient here and the color ramp, that's going to make it lighter and darker. So I want to mix these two together. So what I'm going to do is click and drag just to box select these nodes and bring them over so I have a bit more space. So now to mix these two colors together, I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the mix node, and I'll put the mix node right here. Now in older versions of Blender, there was the mix RGB node, but in the new Blender version of 3.4, the mix RGB node has been changed to just the mix node. So if you're using an older version of Blender, you can just add the mix RGB node, but if you're using Blender 3.4 or a later version, you can just add the mix node. Either way, you can still follow along with the tutorial, whether you're using the mix node or the mix RGB node. So on the mix node here, I'm going to click on the float, and I'm going to instead change this to color. And then I want to put the Voronoi distance into socket A, and then I want this color ramp here to be going into socket B. And if you're using the mix RGB node, instead of it saying A and B, it'll be color 1 and color 2, but it'll still act exactly the same. And then I can control shift and select the mix node to preview it. Now right here on mix, I want to click on this, and I instead want to change this to the linear light. And now you can see that it's going to be darker on the bottom because of that color ramp, but then on the top here it's going to be lighter. But you will still be able to see the Voronoi and the noise. And I'm actually going to turn this factor value all the way up to 1 so that we're using much more of the gradient. Now you can see it looks really black right now, and so to make the gradient less strong we can edit the color ramp. So if you click on the black tab here on this color ramp before the gradient, I'm going to click on the black color, and I'm going to turn this up. And so if we turn it up, it's going to make the gradient brighter. So now you can see that there's that transition, so it's darker over here, and then it's lighter up here. And if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using for this color ramp here on the dark color, I'm going to be using a hex value of 727272. So you can punch in that hex value if you want to use the same color that I'm using. 
And then also for this lighter color here on the color ramp, this is going to be a hex value of F1, F1, F1. So you can punch that in here if you want to use the same color. And I'm going to drag this white tab over just a little bit more. So there we go. We now have a really nice black and white texture there for the biscuit. So I now want to take the mix node and I want to put that into the base color of the principled shader and then I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. Now I want to change the colors because this doesn't really look like a biscuit, it doesn't really look like bread, so I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for a color ramp and we can put the color ramp in between the linear light, the mix node and the principal shader. So let's put this in between the two nodes. So we can now change the colors of the color ramp and that'll change the colors. So I'm first going to drag this tab over and I'm actually going to drag it pretty close and then I'm going to hold down the control key and click here to add another tab and I'm going to bring this one over as well. So we're going to be creating three different colors for the biscuit colors. So if I click on the first one here, this white one, this one I'm going to make kind of a peachy color, something like that. And then also this one here in the middle, this one I want to be a brown color. So let's make this kind of an orangey peachy color. And then to make it brown, we can make it a bit darker. So something like that. And then also if you click on the black tab here, this one I also want to be brown, but I want it to be even darker. So let's just make this a very gray color. And then I can bring it towards the orange. So we now have kind of a peachy color or a tannish color. Then we have a lighter brown and then a darker brown. And if you want to use the same exact hex values that I'm using, Using. For the tan color, it's going to be a hex value of FFB97E. And then here for the light brown, this is going to be a hex value of 9E6A42. And then here for the dark brown, this one is going to be a hex value of 66. 340D. And then I also want to bring this over a bit. And actually, I can control shift and select the color ramp to preview it. And I can kind of drag these around. So I don't want to drag them too close to each other because then it's too contrasty. So I'm just going to kind of play around with the placement. I think I'll bring this over a little bit and then maybe bring this back a little bit because I don't want it to be too contrasty. I do want to see a bit of the texture there. So that is pretty good. So I'll just control shift and select the principled shader. Now I also want to give this material a little bit of subsurface scattering just to allow a little bit of light through and make it look a bit more natural and organic and make it look a bit more like food. So right here on the subsurface, this is the subsurface scattering. I'm going to turn this value to a 0 0.007. So just a tiny little bit of subsurface scattering. And then right here on the subsurface color, I don't want this to be white. So I'm going to click on this color here and I'm going to make this kind of a orange color and that'll make it look more like bread. And if you want to use the same subsurface color that I'm using, if you go to the hex value, you can punch in E76927. That's the exact subsurface color that I'll be using. And this is definitely going to make it look more natural and organic and more like food. Now I also want to put the mix node into the roughness so that some parts are more rough and other parts are more shiny. So let's take the result here from the mix, the linear light, and I'm going to put that into the roughness. Now this is way too shiny, so I want to make it more rough because this is a biscuit material, so it should be kind of dry and so it should be more rough. So what I'm going to do to control the colors is press shift A, go to the search, and I'm going to search for a color ramp. And let's stick the color ramp in between the linear light and the roughness. So now we can change the color ramp colors, and that'll change how rough and shiny the material is. So if the colors are lighter, then it's going to be more rough. So I'm going to click on this black tab here, and I'm going to turn this up. And so when I turn it up, you can see now it is much more rough. And that makes it look more dry, kind of like a biscuit. And also this light tab right here, I think I will click on the color and make this just a little bit darker. And if you want to use the same exact hex values that I'm using, over here, this slightly darker gray color, this is going to be a hex value of B4, B4, B4. And then here on the slightly lighter color, this is going to be a hex value of E5, E5, E5. So this is starting to look like a biscuit, but it is very smooth. And so I want to make it bumpy and make it look kind of crumbly. So to do that, I'm going to take this linear light here and I'm going to put it into the normal to give it some bump. Now we need to convert this color data into normal data. So to do that, I can press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the bump node and let's put the bump node in between the linear light 
and the normal. And then to actually convert it to normal data, we want to put the result here from the linear light into the height value of the bump. And that way it's going to convert it to normal data. So now you can see the biscuit looks bumpy. Now it is a bit too strong, so I'm going to take the strength and I'm just going to turn that down to like a 0.3 so it is more subtle. And also I think it looks better if we invert it, so I'm going to hit the invert button just to invert the bump. Now I also want to add a bit more bump all over, so I want to take this noise texture and I also want to put that into the bump. So I'm going to click on this bump node right here, and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it, and let's stick it down here. Now the normal can go into the normal, and so this way we can mix two bump maps together. And I'm also going to uncheck the invert. So now that we have this other bump node, I can take the noise texture factor, and let's put that into the height value of the bump. And then right here on the strength, I do want this to be more subtle. So I'm just going to turn this to like a 0.15, just a 0.15. I think that looks better. All right, so that is definitely looking more like a biscuit, but you can see the edges are still pretty smooth. And so I'm going to be adding this noise texture into the displacement to actually displace the mesh and make it look kind of bumpy and chunky. So let's take the noise texture factor, and I'm going to put that into the displacement of the material output. And then just like these bump nodes, we need to convert this black and white data into displacement data. So to do that, I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search. And I'm going to search for the displacement node. And I want to put the displacement node here in the wire between the noise texture and the displacement. So you can just stick it right there, and it's going to connect it up. And let's bring the displacement down so it isn't overlapping. And then to actually convert it to displacement data, I want the noise texture factor to actually be going into the height value of the displacement. Now you can see it's still not actually displacing the mesh, and that's because we need to tell the material that it can use the displacement. So if you go right over here to the side panel and go to the material properties, I'm going to minimize these tabs, and I want to open up the settings tab right here. And then right here on the surface displacement, you can see it's set to bump only right now. I want to change this to displacement only. And this is going to tell the material that it can use the displacements. And then it is way too strong, so let's just turn the strength way down on the displacement. So to turn it down, I can turn the scale value to just like a 0.1 for now. Now, right here on the displacement, you could change this to displacement and bump, and that way it would be more detailed, but I actually prefer the displacement here just to be set to displacement only, because we are using these bump nodes here to give the surface some bump, and so I think changing it to displacement and bump actually gives it a bit too much detail, because I do want some parts of the biscuit to be a little bit smooth. So you could use displacement and bump if you want to, but I'm going to use displacement only. Now this is still too strong, so let's turn the scale down to make it even more subtle. And I'm going to turn the displacement scale to a 0 0.025. I think that looks pretty good. So now if you look on the edges, you can see it looks bumpy. And that looks much more like a biscuit. And there we have it, so there is the procedural biscuit material. So I'll just give this a final render. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to purchase the tutorial files and help support this channel, then you can get that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, I'll have the links in the description. And if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, you can also check out my procedural material packs, and you can also check out my procedural food pack to purchase procedural food materials. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. Links are in the description. But I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you for watching.